Hello, my name is Bellamy. I play a Disc Priest in Promethean, and this is my Vidu Guide. This guide is relevant as of patch 4.2, so keep in mind that as the add-on changes, there may be aspects of this guide that are incorrect. Vidu is a compact and extremely configurable raid frame add-on that is especially designed for healers, although it is useful for any class. Unlike other raid add-ons such as Greater X Pearl, it contains a built-in click-to-cast configuration menu, which makes it a great standalone and easy-to-maintain choice for any healer. This is what Vidu should look like out of the box. You can open the configuration by either clicking on the picture of the Draenei on your minimap, or by typing slash VDOPT. As you can see, there are several panels here. In this guide, we'll only be discussing the configuration of the raid panel, which is this panel as that's the only panel I use. The other panels you can see are tanks, private tanks, and pets. The first thing you'll want to do is get rid of these extra panels by going into Vidu, the Move tab, and clicking the X next to the panel you'd like to remove. If you ever want to enable these panels in the future, just click Add under New Panel and click Choose on the panel to set the parameters of the panel display. You can also use this tab to display what Vidu would look like in a raid, so you can keep track of any changes you make without having to be in a group to see them. We'll use this feature extensively throughout this guide. After we've deleted the panels we're not going to be using, we can get started on the raid frame configuration menu. I'm going to approach Vidu's configuration in a relatively linear manner, progressing through each tab rather quickly, so try to keep up and pause the video if you need to. I'll only discuss the settings that I personally have modified in my raid frames. Vidu has fairly user-friendly tooltip descriptions of each setting, so if you'd like to know more about a setting I haven't talked about, you can easily ascertain its function using these. The first tab is the General tab. In this tab, you'll want to select Hide Empty Buttons right over here, which will, be the, which will hide the header and background of groups that do not have active players in them. You'll also want to lock your raid frames so you don't accidentally drag them around during combat. Under the Scanners tab, you'll want to uncheck Talent Trees and also uncheck Direction Arrow. The direction arrow puts an arrow in the unit frame of a person who is out of range of you. I find this cluttered and distracting, so I don't use it, but if you think you could benefit from it, feel free to enable it. Under threat incoming, I uncheck overheal and own, as I only want to see the effective healing of other healers and don't care about overhealing. Under AOE advice, I have everything checked. I'm a priest, so for any other class, you'll want to leave per group unchecked, as that only applies to Prayer of Healing. The Miscellaneous tab is where you can set a notification for resurrection and have a DC shield that prevents Vidu from disappearing if you DC in combat and log back in during combat. In order for the shield to work, you have to reload your UI after your raid has finished filling up so it can remember the frames to reconstruct them. This is also where you'd enable add-ons such as click or button facade. I like to have all my icons skinned and button facade, for example, so I usually select that option. The Indicators tab is where you can enable or disable indicators in various parts of your units and tell them what to display. I like having a special dot set to AOE advice, so that the icon for the best target of one of my smart heels shows up separately from other indicators and is larger. This tab is where you change the color of your frames from this green gradient color to any other color. I personally like my frames to be dark gray with a light gray background, but you can also set them to be class colored or any color that you like. As you can see, there are several health display options in this menu. Gr generic gradient is the green to red option, generic class colored is class colored, and health generic solid is the one we'll be using, and it allows all of your frames to have a uniform color. If you want to tweak the color of the health bar, you'll need to hop on over quickly to the Colors tab and change it there. You can set it to be any color that you like, from black to pink. I like mine to be a dark charcoal gray color. We'll hop on over to the Indicators tab and leave the Colors tab alone for now. We'll get back to it later in the Panel section. 
Back on the Indicator tab, tab, you can see that if you'd like health bars that fill up from bottom to top, or from right to left, or that empty instead of fill when players are at full health, you can set that up in this menu. For bar background, you also want that to be solid. So we go into bar background solid and configure the color of the bar background. Make sure that you select flag always solid when you're configuring the bar background as that actually configures the indicator for the background when people are not out of range, do not have a debuff and are not disconnected. We'll set this to a nice light color and turn the opacity up to max so that we don't have translucent backgrounds for our bars. You can also configure the texture of the background here by hitting the more key. I like my texture to be flat for all my frames, so I'll select that. I'll also do the same for the mana bars. The cluster menu will configure how your AoE advice works. If you're a priest, you'll want to set the indicators to radial, since spells will be affecting those around your target, and you'll want to, your spell source to be target and your destination to be party. If you're a shaman, you'll want to select Chained for Chain Heal, Spell Source Target, and Destination Raid. For a Paladin or Druid, your Operation Mode will be Radial, your Source Target, and your Destination Raid. I personally don't have text or a counter set up because I show the spell by an icon rather than a number or a box, but if you'd like to tweak the counter display, you can do that here. Bouquets is an advanced menu that allows you to set multiple hots, debuffs, or effects to the same spot on your frame and have each of them be under a different priority. I won't go into depth on bouquet since it's a little complicated, but I'll show you a sample of a new bouquet you can make. In the blank box, you'll enter the name of your new bouquet. We'll call this one hots and have it display all player hots on the same part of the frame with your own hots on highest priority. Once we've named it hots, we'll click new and that will open up the menu for the new bouquet. To add hots to the list, we'll click Add and enter in the name of that hot. If you want your hots to be displayed using the icon of the spell, make sure to select None Default in the drop-down menu. For the highest priority hot, I'm a priest, so I'll type in Renew. I'll click Mine and, and not Others, since I only want to see the duration on my own Renew. Notice how it appears on the list. For the next hop, I'll select Rejuvenation. And again, click None Default to show the icon of the spell, and click Others, since I want to see it when Druids in my raid had otted a target. I'll then do the same for Regrowth. and Riptide. You can tweak the priority order by clicking on the arrows to the right of this menu. I personally like Rejuve to be on high priority below my own hots because it's a very strong hot and also has a long duration. Under this mouse tab, Spells Mouse, this is where you'll bind your heals in Vidu. Vidu is intelligent in that it can detect which spells you actually have and which you don't. It can even recognize macros. I'm a priest, so when I type Riptide, notice how it's grayed out because I don't have that spell. You can bind to mouse wheel and up to five buttons with modifier keys. You can also bind macros to this menu and it will automatically detect which macro you're talking about. For example, I'll go into my macro menu I have a macro called FH for flash heal. So when I type that macro into this list, FH, it automatically recognizes that it's a macro. If you have a mouse that has more than five buttons, like I do, you'll have to use the keys local menu. Go into your mouse's configuration menu and select buttons on your keyboard you'd like extra buttons to score, correspond to in Vidu. 
I usually choose Control alt shift z or something equally complicated that I'll never hit on accident, and then bind spells to this button combination in this menu, one for each individual mouse key. These macros will not take up macro slots in your in-game menu, so you can also use this menu for making mouse over macros for your spells to conserve space. Keys Global is where you can bind keybind keys in Vidu. The nice thing about all these menus is that all of these spells only work over Vidu frames, so you can have them bound to different things outside of Vidu. Just think of it as a built-in macaroon for your Vidu. You type in a spell name, either in Keys Local or Keys Global or the mouse tab, and it automatically generates a Vidu only macro for you. You don't actually have to type out the entire macro. The Hostile tab lets you configure spells to cast on hostile targets in Vidu's frames using the target, of target frame option, and is useful to bind CC abilities to. The Miscellaneous tab is where you can set your trinkets that are on use to auto-fire every time they become available, along with your engineering gloves. You can also do the same with instant abilities, like Inner Focus or Nature Swiftness that don't trigger the GCD. These abilities will cast the next time they become available and in the case of Inner Focus, the next time they're available and you cast the appropriate spell to consume them. Spells Smart Cast allows you to automatically cleanse, resurrect, and buff a target out of combat by left clicking on their frames. You can also set a modifier key to click in addition to left mouse click to do this, or just use the default. I personally only leave Resurrection selected since I don't want to accidentally cleanse something out of combat that I shouldn't, for example in ZG where the cauldron buffs show up as a debuff. Under buffs, you can set up your buff watch, which allows you to left click on this special panel both in and out of combat to buff your raid. Keep in mind that due to secure buttons in the blizzard code, you cannot actually change your target in combat for a specific buff. So pallies who need to switch targets for beacon, or priests who would like to cast pain suppression on different people during combat, will not find this too useful for those buffs. However, if you always cast your buffs on a consistent target, such as always casting power and fusion on yourself, or always buffing your raid with things like powered fortitude or shadow protection, you will find this panel to be very convenient. In this panel, you can select to configure the color, background, and scale of the buff watch. For example, I like to have mine be horizontal, so I can keep it in the top left of my frame. Under colors, I like to set the panel border to zero, in addition to the panel background and swatch border. just to make it look a lot cleaner. The rebuff menu is where you configure when it prompts you to rebuff, and set it so if you have a buff like Beacon or Fear Ward, it flashes when it's about to expire on your target. The debuffs tab is where you can configure the appearance of various boss and encounter debuffs. I personally only care about boss debuffs and debuffs I can dispel, so I have boss only checked and removable checked. You can even configure a sound to occur when there's a dispellable debuff on your target. I find this personally find them very distracting, so I do not select this option. The custom tab lets you add boss fight debuffs and configure their appearance. I don't like to see animation, but I do like to see stacks, so I'll apply those settings universally to all debuffs. You can also tweak debuffs individually and even set them to make a noise when they appear, which could be useful for severe debuffs like Rack. Vidu already has a fairly comprehensive debuff list of relevant encounter debuffs for Firelands, but there are a few debuffs that you may want to add. For example, Superheated on Ragnaros is not in this list. So I'll show you how to add additional debuffs to this list by typing in Superheated, checking to make sure the settings are consistent with the universal settings, and clicking Save. As you can see, Superheated is now on the custom debuff list. This menu lets you configure where debuffs appear. By default, they appear in the top right, but I like to set them to the bottom middle, since I'm used to grid. I also only like to see one debuff at a time. You can also configure the font in this menu. My font for text is always Arial Narrow. 
I'll show you the dimensions I use for my frames so you can see what you need to set yours to to get the icon to appear in the exact bottom